While the keyword Starship Flight 4 is the hot search in the space community, another event has also drawn lots of attention. Yes, after more than a decade of research and construction, after technical glitches and dozens of delays, Starliner achieved its first victory by sending two astronauts to the ISS. This is indeed cause for celebration. However, according to continuously updated information, Starliner's journey seems to have faced some issues. This raises the question of whether Starliner's success, the only capsule by Boeing, was a mere stroke of luck. How will it return to Earth, and what are the risks involved? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Boeing's $1.4 billion Starliner mission has safely docked with the International Space Station and the spacecraft's crew. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams have arrived aboard the station after overcoming new issues that arose overnight and on Thursday en route to the orbiting laboratory. This is the first time astronauts have arrived at the space station via a Boeing Starliner spacecraft. Docking occurred at 1.34 p.m. Eastern Time. Steps were taken to more firmly secure the connection between Starliner and the space station's port, and docking was completed about 20 minutes later. Nice to be attached to the big city in the sky, Wilmore said after docking was confirmed. Wilmore and Williams were welcomed with a ringing bell and plenty of hugs from the seven astronauts and cosmonauts who were already on board. With their arrival, there's now nine people working and living on the ISS. Very cozy and joyful sight, we must admit. And we all congratulate the astronauts in the successful first flight of Starliner. But don't celebrate too soon. There is that saying, what goes up must come down. Frankly, I'm quite worried about the condition of the Starliner capsule. Is it safe enough to bring these astronauts back to Earth? This remains a significant question for NASA and Boeing officials. The reason I'm raising this issue is likely due to the instability of the Starliner before it could dock with the ISS. Sadly, Starliner experienced a helium leak and temporary loss of thrusters during its journey to the space station. As the Starliner crew approached the space station for their final hour, they began manually piloting the spacecraft as part of a planned test of its manual flight controls. During this time, five reaction control system thrusters on the service module failed. After performing hot fire tests, the crew managed to reactivate four of the thrusters. These small thrusters are essential for making precise adjustments to the spacecraft's trajectory as it gets close to the space station. The service module, which houses all 28 of the thrusters, will not return to Earth. Initially, Starliner was scheduled to dock with the space station by 12.15 Eastern Time. However, the thruster malfunction caused a delay of an hour and 15 minutes, necessitating a shift to a new docking window. Throughout the thruster test, Starliner remained approximately 820 feet, 250 meters, away from the space station. This distance ensured the spacecraft was in safe orbit outside the 656-foot, 200-meter invisible keep-out zone established to protect the station. During the troubleshooting process, the thrusters were essentially reset and reactivated, with four out of five thrusters getting back online. This gave NASA the confidence to allow the Starliner to approach and eventually dock with the space station. However, this is now the second consecutive mission in which a subset of these small thrusters has failed to function during a Starliner flight. In the vehicle's previous mission, Orbital Flight Test 2, back in May 2022, some of these same thrusters did not work as required during the approach to the station. Although two minor software fixes were applied after that flight, they still seem to have not resolved the issue. This team will continue to evaluate the data behind the software and deselected the thrusters when they didn't meet certain conditions set by the software, said Mark Nappy, Vice President and Program Manager of Commercial Crew Program for Boeing. I think we're missing something fundamental that's going on inside of the thrusters, said Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, on Thursday. Stitch refused to speculate on how long it would take to study and resolve the thruster issues as part of the certification process needed for Starliner to participate in crewed missions to the ISS. Boeing's contracted to perform six of these missions, each carrying four astronauts for six-month stays on the station from now through 2030. In addition to the thruster malfunction, Starliner faced another issue on its journey, helium leaks. The space agency said late Wednesday in a post on X that two additional helium leaks had been detected on the vehicle. One helium leak had been discovered prior to launch and deemed acceptable. 
Helium is used in spacecraft thruster systems to allow the thrusters to fire and is not combustible or toxic, according to Boeing. As of Thursday morning, two of the three leaks had been corrected, according to a live NASA broadcast. A fourth minor link was discovered later as well, Stitch said. Mission managers pulled go for rendezvous and docking with the space station, and the leaks were not expected to impact docking, according to the broadcast. During all Starliner's rendezvous and proximity operations, we'll keep those propellant manifolds open, but they'll stay open until docking. Starliner's currently maintaining plenty of helium reserves, Boeing aerospace engineer Jim May confirmed Thursday morning, shared by Boeing. Currently, the helium leak is not a safety issue for the crew, the vehicle, or the mission. The flight control team will continue to monitor the leak rates in Starliner's propulsion system after docking. All of Starliner's manifolds were closed per normal plans, and currently... There are no active leaks, according to NASA. What we need to do over the next few days is take a look at the leak rate there and figure out what we go do relative to the rest of the mission, he said. I think we have some tools in our toolkit to manage this. We'll take a little time to go, assess it, and we'll undock and land when we're ready. There may be some commonality between the leaks, Nappy said. Now that we're in flight and we've seen a couple more leaks, if it's a common cause across those flanges, then there might be something more to the flange itself. Maybe a bad lot of seals or some other variable, he said. Stitch said the problems Starliner is facing are not unlike the first crewed flight of NASA's space shuttle program or other test flights of spacecraft rated to take humans to space. This means that he considers these incidents quite familiar and believes they can be resolved. In fact, NASA and Boeing want to spend the next few days assessing the data collected during Starliner's flight to the station to determine if any additional tests are needed before Starliner undocks and returns to Earth with Williams and Wilmore. This could happen as early as June 14th, but delays are also possible, Stitch said. The process of undocking, initiating the deorbit burn, and surviving re-entry into Earth's atmosphere will be among the most challenging parts of the Starliner mission. NASA has many issues to address before Starliner can be cleared for its return journey. Both the helium supply and the reaction control thrusters are essential for a successful departure from the station and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. However, during a briefing with reporters on Thursday, Boeing official Mark Nappy sought to downplay the severity of the issues faced by Starliner and its flight controllers. He emphasized that while the problems are significant, they're not insurmountable and that the team's confident in their ability to address them effectively. We have two problems on this vehicle, the helium leak and figuring out how to fine-tune these thrusters so that they're not selected off, Nappy said. Those are pretty small issues to deal with, and we'll figure them out for the next mission, so I don't see them as significant at all. Finally, the comprehensive evaluation over the next few days will focus on ensuring all systems are functioning correctly in safety. If the analysis indicates further testing is unnecessary, the plan will proceed to undock and return. However, safety remains top priority, and the mission timeline may adjust accordingly to address any uncertainties. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.